Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop. Behind the camera, cameras, is Mitch. Mitch is recording everything because I can't do that. Thank you, Mitch. I have an old shirt on. I used to teach Frame Building 101 at the university and I thought I would wear the shirt today. So that's the story there. We're going to work today on, on the Tiger Cub and we're going to make an intake manifold and related things like fiber washer and some spacers and special nuts that fit. We'll get into that. But I wanted to tell you a quick story about uh, a book. When I was in high school, I think I was 16, and there was an announcement over the PA. There was a bookstore down on Homer Street in Vancouver, and they were looking for students to work the shelves and to, and to stock books, and they needed 15 or 16 people. This was unusual for it to be advertised over the PA system, and so, of course, I was interested because if I had a job, I could buy some motorcycle parts, so a whole bunch of us went down to the bookstore, and I did get hired, and we worked there for a few months, and I found a book. It's called, it's Tuning for Speed, it's by Phil Irving, and it's all about how to make an engine engine go faster. So, of course, you can see it's kind of worn. So, I've had this book for 50 years. I've had always had an interest in intake systems and exhaust systems. So, we're going to make an intake system for the Tiger Cub. In the meantime, to get started, let's have a little look at the Tiger Cub and see what's new. I took off some paint because I think the frame has to be repainted anyway. It's got some a few little issues and it's fillet braised so this is basically what i would consider to be a handmade frame this frame is it's registered as a 1958 and i guess labor was much less expensive back then and it's it's got some fillet brazing on it one thing i noticed now that the bike is up on a stand if you come to the back and you look, you see how the wheel is, it looks to me like the wheel is angling that way. So we're going to have to have a little look at that. That's not today, but that'll be coming up. I've done some filing. I've, I've, been, I've been taking off the casting lines and I've, I've been matching the cases. So the outer cases will be lightly polished. The middle section will be bead blasted. And then these cases over here, they'll be lightly polished. I'm not going to make a mirror finish, but they're going to look nice. And I was at a friend's yesterday, Robert Watson, and I got a headlight. And it's the perfect size. And he has no idea where he got the headlight from. And if you look on the lens there, made in France. So it's a bit of a mystery, but it's going to work fine. So this will stay chrome and the actual shell here will get painted black. So that's what's new on the on the cub. I bought the Tiger Cubs a few months ago and I got four engines and parts. So part of what I got was these two carburetors. And this one is really small. And this one is you can see it's much larger in the bore. So this, this one was on the head, and I'm just going to show you. Got my vernier here. See this? this? This actually fits. This carb fits right onto the studs. So, so this was on, but what's happening is if I, if I check the bore size here, if I lock that. So there we go. That's the size of the carburetor. Can you see here, there's a, there's a mismatch. Obviously the carb is much too small for the, for the size of the intake port. So then I look over here and this one is an Amol, Amol monoblock. That's what they call these. And its size is slightly over an inch. Now, I was reading the Bible last night, and I'm talking about the Tiger Cub Bible, 
and I, I found a page with all the sizes of the carburetors, and they said that in the early days, often the size was 17 millimeters, 18 millimeters. I know it's an English bike, but that's how the how how it's recorded. Sometimes it was 11 sixteenths. So if I measure this carburetor here, it's a 19. So a lot of the a lot of the smaller a lot of the earlier bikes had really small carburetors. I thought what we'd do is because this is a really light one. Oh, and I, I got a concentric. I got this off a friend, Tom. Thank you, Tom. And this is the carb that I want to use. And it's also the, it's also the very same size as this. So it's just almost inch and a sixteenth or 27 millimeters which is a size that wasn't used. It was too big. The problem is, is that the intake studs are really narrow. And so it's hard to get enough space there. And there's, I, I did a, a drawing. I did a bunch of notes. And then I did a drawing. So what's going to happen is, you see this manifold here. This one is, is the right, is the right spacing to go onto the cylinder head. Do you see how there's a flat spot here? So when I put on this here to check the, the thickness, there's not a lot of metal there, is there? A little over a sixteenth inch, sixteenth of an inch. So I have to do the same here. Can you see on the drawing, see the red? The red there is going to be the flat spots that I have to mill after this is, is turned on the lathe. And I made some nuts. I got a tap. It's, uh, it's British Standard Fine. It's 26 threads per inch. It's one quarter. And the size is... Uh, it's a British standard size, so it fits my special wrench there. But this nut now is going to be way too big, so that's not going to work. So on comparison, for comparison, this is a, a, a one, one quarter inch regular national fine. It's got seven sixteenths. Even that's too big. So we're going to make some nuts with the one quarter inch uh, a BSF, which is, is British standard fine, but it's going to have a 10 mil hex on it because that's the only way that it's going to fit into that space there. This is not to, not to scale, but I did this big so that you can see it easily. So that's partly what we're going to do. Let's go over to my, my weighing scale because I found it interesting how much these, these carburetors weigh. Let's just go have a quick look. So the lightweight carb, the one with the really small bore of 19 millimeters, it weighs 377 grams. We'll put on the, on, on the concentric. It weighs 724 grams. These two carbs are the same size. So, 724, look at that porker, 1,036 grams, that's, that's amazing, that's, uh, that's over two pounds for a carburetor, not a racing carburetor at all. Something else I did yesterday, I made, I made this, because on the intake manifold, there's going to be on on this end here we know the shape because that's going to be the same as the flange on the carburetor but on the on the cylinder head it it's not so well defined because it's this side's a little larger than that so i made this and i made it fit quite nicely so that's the shape of the manifold do you see how this is a little bit larger than than the uh, the size of the port? So so the port's going to be opened up just a touch. So one of the things we're going to do right now, I've got 
insulating washer material. So we're going to put this in the mill. We're going to drill holes and bore a hole. I got the boring bar set up and then we can knock this off the list and then we'll use the a bandsaw just to cut the shape out. You can get sanded up later. I got some rod, which is one quarter inch, and the holes got reamed to 0.252, so it's a, see, I can just move it, but it stays there, so that's a nice fit. So what I'm doing now is to outline on the masking tape, and I just have enough. This is a test. See how we did. Look at look at that. That's a good that's a good fit, isn't it? Because I know the exact spacing. How do you find the center to center of, of two studs like that? Well, first you measure the inside, then you measure the outside. You add up those two numbers and you divide by two. That's how you get the exact center of the stud. So if this wasn't the exact center, it wouldn't fit. So that's how you do it. I'm going to face the end and then I know how long it has to be. It's 1.45 inches. So we'll add a little bit extra for the hacksaw. This is a, a two and three quarter inch or 2.75. And if I look at the carburetor, it's a little less than 2.65. So we're going to machine down about, uh, about this much to 2.65 and then we'll bore the hole. And the hole is at a, a one degree taper. So we have to use the compound here. We're gonna set it at one, one degree, very, very small amount, but and then we have to, we can't use the automatic feed, hand feed. That's the process. Here we go. is should be fairly accurate that to me looks like one degree and the size there you go it's on zero we're good I have to take away all that metal there. That's next.
So that's pretty close. We're at 324. So we're, we're good there. So now we have to do this side. There's the inside, a one degree taper that you can't see, but it's there. I have to hold this in the, in the three jaw chuck and it's not hugely wide. So that's why I've got this. So I'm gonna put that across and then I can put this against the flat. And that's going to make it more accurate than not, than just by eyeball. So, so we can tell by how it spins. So we'll have a have a quick check. Okay, it's a manifold. It's not a nuclear reactor, so we're okay. Now I have to mark some lines on the side. I'm going to use my combination square because I need to set it into the rotary table and drill two holes at a certain spacing. Then I need to flip it over and get the holes in line again at, at the other spacing. So let's go do that. We'll uh, put some felt pen and then I can scribe a line right on the felt pen. It'd be easier to see. There we go. I have scribed lines. So that line I just scribed, we're going to put it in line with the felt pen. That should make it pretty accurate. Now we'll find out if this system is going to work. So there's my line. So if I put that No, it doesn't work. If I had it right at the 90, then that that would work. There we go. Got lots of paint. I was wondering if that would work and I I had my doubts, but it's because we're flipping it over 180, that's why it doesn't work like that. If we split the difference on the holes like that. So there, I've made a little mark. I can eyeball that mark and just bring it over, over the top right there. Okay. Okay, so now I do the same thing again here. I line up with that. So that line is right in line with the hole. And then I center it with, with, the, with the center drill. So there we go. We got these two holes in line now. So what I gotta do now is to make a mark right here. So now if I flip it over, it should be good. So when I flip it over like that, I think that's about as accurate as I can get with this system.
I want to hold on the carburetor using a five millimeter Allen screw, but you can see here, see how it's a lot larger. The hole is a lot larger. So I made a sketch here so that you can see what I'm going to do. Here's the intake manifold. It's going to be a five mil thread. Here's the carburetor like so with the larger hole. So I want to make something that fits in there really, really nicely like that has a shoulder that goes out there and then the allen screw is going to go like that come down something like so so this is made out of 6061 and the allen screw will 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 just go down inside and then this will just slide into there so it'll locate it really well these allen screws they're very very strong i know they're only five mil but they hold incredibly well so let's go make these pieces and thread this and then once the carb is on there i can i can trace around it and we can we we can cut that in the bandsaw and it's going to cut the other side as well but the other side is much smaller so that's okay because we'll we'll do the last bit on the mill for that side that's the plan Ooh. and then we'll do the other one nice thread Okay, this is a test. Oh, okay. Okay, so it does fit. This one has a little bit, see the white stuff? That's corrosion in there. So we're good. So if we make it right about there, that should be good. I get a regular drill and I got one which is flattened off so I start with this one it centers the hole and then I put it in and that makes a nice level for the bottom of the allen screw to rest on We're checking depth. Oh, look at that. That looks fine. We need to put flats on there because we got to get, we got to get a nut in there. That's what's going to hold that onto the cylinder head. So that's going to tell me when it's up and down in the in the mill vise because we've got to put flats across there and we're going to use my tool so that it's there's there's not going to be a lot of metal there it's going to be 
sixteenth of an inch, maybe. Really, really small amount of metal. Okay. Pretty thin. It just fits. It's a really tight fit. It's, there's no, nothing really extra here at all. And if I didn't have a Bondus Allen wrench with a ball on the end, couldn't get an Allen wrench in there. Under here, I can't get all the way in there. So I've got something here I can use. I got a friend who works in a dentist office and these are the used ones. So this I can get all the way, I can put a nice line there. I can just scribe it. And I can get, see I can get right in there. Well, I can get almost, yeah, I can, I can, I can get all the way in there. Okay, now we'll go to the band saw after I get the carb off. We'll get this thing matching beautifully. It's okay to leave a little bit on there, just a little bit. Because otherwise I'll be filing into the carburetor and I don't, don't really want to do that so much. So I'm being careful. turned out okay. I didn't see I didn't put any hard any marks on the carburetor for all that filing. Oh look I touched see right there I touched right there very small underneath too. Whipped up a sweat though that's for sure. It's very handy having this because it's a template for well it was a template for the fiber insulator and now it's a template for where we cut this. This is going to be done on the mill with an end mill. And then I will do a little bit of filing, but most, mostly end mill. I tried to go right up to the line and not really go over it. I can always file it a bit more, so. So I got that set to the height last time, so I should be able to just make a cut now. In theory, right? In theory. We'll try. We're cheating here a little bit. We're making a, a quarter inch BSF nut out of a six millimeter metric stainless nut. That's just one way of making things level in the vise. Just if you press down, 
when it's almost tight, it seems to work. A little bit of tapping compound. Okay. Air filter, important. So the size of this is 930 seconds. It's not metric, 930 seconds. Who would have chosen that? Huh. It looks like the choke is getting in the way. Once, once it's on, it fits. I wasn't gonna have a choke on there, so let's just take it off. Oh, look at that. It comes out really easy. I can just blank that off because we got the we got the tickler. Learning as we go. That's how we do things. It's I knew it was going to be a tight fit. I knew that. That's a tight fit. And you see this extra thread? My plan is to make some, some custom nuts that are as long as the studs. So right now, I'm not really happy with the look of how there's a nut and all that exposed thread, but that exposed thread, it's not gonna be there. It's gonna come off. So there you are, a quarter inch BSF thread with a 10 mil hex. You have to put these on equally because if one side goes on all the way, you can't get the wrench into the other side. Good thing I won't be taking off the carburetor much. Oh, it's hard to get a cable in. I checked. Hmm, that's not very good. That's supposed to be out here because we, we checked that. So I guess the cut is the cob sitting at an angle or I just eyeballed it. That's a small problem. One problem at a time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun making this. I, I really wish that that wasn't like that, but we'll figure that out one out. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us a coffee, that would be a great thing to do. Take care next week. Bye.